yes guys i believe bitcoin will have one final dump and then a massive pump to the upside it will be actually more a shakeout and I'm going to show you today the levels that I'm watching for this potential shakeout to the downside before we pump here massive, massively to the upside. And if you want to know which level I'm exactly watching and where I'm going to take action, you should definitely subscribe to the channel, like this video and also activate the bell so that you will never miss out on these important updates. And now let's start directly with today's content. And first of all, we're going to start with the Bitcoin dominance and Bitcoin is going slightly up today and as bitcoin is going slightly up also the, the dominance is still going up and that's why a lot of the altcoins are not really moving it's really really complicated to trade right now altcoins because they are really not moving at all that it makes fun to actually trade them i made a little bit of money today but it was not really easy as i'm used to so but i made a little bit of money so it's fine here the bitcoin dominance i still believe we will touch this resistance area of 50 to 51 percent and only from there we're going to see a rejection back to the downside and the altcoins will start to rally from there but not before i don't see it happening before we have touched at least 50 percent now we are not that far away anymore from 50 percent just 0.23 percent it could technically be happening tomorrow or the day after tomorrow which is absolutely fine i just want to be done with it and continue with uh, altcoin season but for that we have to get up here in this two years resistance and then and we most likely see a sharp rejection to the downside because this is two years of resistance <laughs> sitting just above us then when we are moving to the dxy uh, bitcoin is not having an explosive move because the dxy is bouncing from this level down here as i mentioned that could be a bounce level and the price bounced from there and is now retesting that 102.57 percent area again now as resistance and for now it's holding as resistance i hope it will continue to do so because then we could see a rollover with the price coming back to support breaking it and continue to go lower while crypto and all risk on assets and also bitcoin will go up that's um what i would like to see here but there are two different things between what we want and what we get. Uh, the stochastic errors, I would tend to disagree and say we still could go a little bit higher. But depending on how today's candle closes, let's say for some reason the DXY drops later on. It's still early in the US. Just uh, yeah, The market just opened there. Let's say for some weird reason the DXY, the candle turns red. And we roll over here that would be good if we are not closing the candle in red then most likely we're going to see another green day to the upside just based on the stochastic rsi what i'm seeing here uh, but luckily luckily we are running straight into resistance that would be at 103 again the next one 103 and 40 where we were before and that one i don't believe we're going to break i just don't see it happening that we're going to break that Worst case from here, we're go, going to see the rejection back to the downside and then an impulse move in Bitcoin. On the CME, there's not much to say. We didn't get a CME gap exactly as I predicted it yesterday. And we are moving already away from the open the closing level on Friday, which is also a good sign. So the mag magnet up here seems to start to work for the time being. But don't forget, I'm going to get now in a second into the content why i believe we're gonna see first a shake up before we see actually a sus uh yeah a really nice move here to the upside now when we look at bitcoin here on the daily chart first of all what i want to point out is that we are for now for now we are above the 20 ema which is the middle band of the bollinger band so that is a bullish sign here on the daily chart that we are above that and remember what i said yesterday the cpr from June, they act also as a magnet and that is where the price is gravitating to, in my opinion, over the next coming days. So now, when we are looking here at the stochastic RSI, that is the reason why I believe we're going to see first a shakeout and then we're going to pump. The stochastic RSI is heavily overbought and needs to cool down from here 
and come back down at least for two, three days. And what that could mean is that the price either has to go sideways or has to go lower. So the price, in my opinion, will go as low as the bottom of the uh, falling wedge and bounce from there back to the upside. And then we're going to see a breakout. So get ready for a potential shakeout to $24,500. $25,000 could be also the level, $25,500, that kind of range. Here, $25,000, where is it? Yeah, 200 here. Here or that little it bit to the bottom of the falling wedge. That's what I'm seeing here. Not today, but tomorrow it could be starting to be happening unless the lower time frames keeping the price afloat and push it sideways while the stochastic RSI will come down. And once it came down, we're going to see then the push to the upside. The target still remains the same, 31k, 32k-ish for that uh, falling wedge. I still believe the falling wedge pattern will play out. And once we are breaking above this downward sloping resistance line, that will be also the moment where I'm going to take a massive, massive long position. Here on the three day chart, also not has uh, anything has changed yet. The price action still has to break above $26,750 to be above the EMA ribbon, which I would like to see in the next um, yeah, one and a half day to be happening and closing this candle above the EMA ribbon. So even if then for two, three days, let's say the next three candle comes back into the ribbon, but not as low as before. And then the next three days pushes it finally above the ribbon. That's absolutely fine. That is most likely what we're going to see here. And that will then, of course, also lead to, to the push above 51% on the normal RSI with a nice candle to the upside. Here on the 30 minutes chart uh, there, it looks like that we are starting to form a range, which makes it actually easy to trade because you can just long support, short resistance, long support, short resistance, long support, short resistance, long support and short resistance with stop losses just above that range or underneath that range, depending on in which position you go. It's a good, how should I, it's a nice way to kill some time uh, and make some pocket change while you're waiting for the bigger breakout. Yeah, that's what I would call it. So, but here also the stochastic RSI, the normal RSI, both are pointing down. So momentum is to the downside. And here on the 30 minutes, we could go as low as to the bottom of that prior resistance area at $25,800, something like this, and then come back above the golden ratio. And then almost in a V-shape, come back up and continue to go here to the upside. So that is uh, also something that I'm looking at. And if I, uh, when we're talking about where would I take positions, it's really simple for me, guys. If we lose $26,300-ish, from there I would take a short to the 0 0.786 to 25,742. And if I would do that, let me see. So my stop would be then up here. Oh, oh, come on. And my take profit would be down here. So you see that is almost a 9 to 1 risk to reward ratio, 2.11%. So with 20x leverage, that's 42% um, that I could yeah, gain here on this scalp trade. And I would have a really, really small stop loss. So I, I'm, lo I'm risking here 4% to almost 5%, to be honest. Um, yeah, almost 5% to make potentially 42%. That is absolutely fine to have that kind of risk to reward ratio. If we would unsuspectingly break to the upside, which I don't believe is going to happen anytime soon, then I would do that from all the way up here. My stop loss would be here, the top of that candle. And then 27,000. Let's make it 400. There is big resistance. There we go. Also here, yeah, almost 12 to 1 risk to reward ratio. 2.89%, 20x leverage, almost 58%. Uh, that is also absolutely fine against a risk of 5%. So 5% 
potential loss, 57% potential gain also here on that potential scalp trade. Absolutely fine. The, you have two setups there, no matter in which direction it goes, either way we can play it. And uh, that's also what I am personally doing. And don't forget, guys, if you want to trade and you want to do it with me together, do it on Bybit. You still get $30,000 for signing up with my link and also $50 if you deposit at least $100 if you complete KYC with a completely new account or with an existing account. If you deposit at least $50, you still get $20 directly credited to your account. Or you trade on Ascendex, there you still get $2,000 absolutely for free if you sign up there. And you earn in Bitcoin while you are trading. So you can earn uh, a part of the trading fees in Bitcoin directly, but also only with that specific link here. There's 32K in bonuses available. Definitely take advantage of that because I don't know how long this is going to last. So now I want to show you also something bullish, of course. And something really, really bullish what I found today is um, we know already that BlackRock filed for um, a Bitcoin spot ETF. But here Andrew Kang is pointing out that when BlackRock is filing for, um, for something with the uh, SEC that normally BlackRock has a 99.8 approval track record rate, which is insane because they have tens of billions of dollars that could potentially flow into the crypto market. So just let me read it to you here. BlackRock filing for Bitcoin spot ETF with a 99.8 approval track record percent is the most positive news we have had in a while, potentially opening floodgates to tens of billions uh, of flows, yet BTC only up 6% from news, feels like mispricing. That's how I felt when I saw the news coming out about BlackRock and the Bitcoin price was just not moving. It should have pumped a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars and it did not happen. So I still believe that this will be a delayed reaction in the market and that move is actually coming really, really, really soon. Now, when we're looking here on this for hourly chart, we are forming a new symmetrical triangle here and coiling up for a move to the upside. And that is supported by the stochastic RSI. Because the stochastic RSI just gave us a buy signal, as you can see here on this four hourly chart down here. And if this pattern would be playing out, then let us quickly see where the technical target would be for this say it breaks out kind of like here, would be at 27,261. So really close to the 30 minutes target that I have just shown you of 27,400. So maybe take profit at around 27,200 um, or just raise your stop loss to 27,200 when we get there and then take profit in 27,300, 400 dollars ish because now we have confluence from the four hourly chart with that bullish pattern that... Um, this level has definitely some significance right now. Here, nothing otherwise has changed from this from the structure overall. Here on the four hourly chart, everything is still pointing to the upside, just with that small consolidation phase in that symmetrical triangle that we are seeing here. And here also, nothing changed on this four hourly chart. We are still in this downward sloping um, parallel channel with the point of control at $28,000. And we have to break first $26,650. So once we are breaking this white resistance line here, this downward sloping resistance line, then we can start to be a little bit more bullish in the short term uh, because that is a line that is holding us down since April this year. So over two months already. So it's definitely time for a convincing break above that uh, downward sloping trend line because only then we will move here into a higher levels. And um, as long as we stay underneath that line, things are not looking good and also could fuel another uh, downwards movement. And that's something that we don't want to see. Guys, that's it already for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure that you smash up the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you then again tomorrow.